Hello everybody, Adam here with another Flash and Action Script 3 tutorial and in this lesson we're going to learn all about how to use the color picker component from the components library. We dynamically render it to stage and we allow a user to access the palette and change one of our dynamic shapes that are rendered to the stage. So each time the shape is drawn, it's, the previous one is removed before the new shape is drawn or the desired color that the user picks. And this source file will be free, just like all the others, so at developphp.com in the Flash tab. Okay, let's rock and roll. Create new Flash Action Script 3 project. And the first thing we're going to do is bring out a text field. It's going to be a static text field. Change the color of my dynamic shape. That's all we want to say. Make it a little bigger. Bring it over a little bit. Right there. Now we're going to show you how to do some targeting. So let's just bra draw out a rectangle and place it right about there. This is where we're going to want our color picker to be. So let's just give it a black border and no fill. I want it to be right there when it's dynamically rendered so I'll get that exact positioning through numbers and I'll show you how okay so just like in the other components tutorials when we go and put in an actions layer let's type in AS3 for action script 3 this can be stage elements if you happen to have any now in the action script 3 layer we open the actions panel by pressing F9 and we type in this line that imports DFL controls color picker now let's press control enter to export and we get those same old errors color picker could not be found so again as usual we go and I find this is an easy remedy just go and grab the color picker put it on stage and control X get it off stage now press control enter and there you go no errors now we can continue smooth since the objective is to allow a front-end user to change the color of our dynamically created shape we're going to show you how to create a rounded rectangle shape and then dynamically render the color picker and have the color picker change the shapes color each time the user changes the color so what we'll do is open the actions panel by highlighting the action script 3 layer pressing F9 now we can code this out now we're gonna have to import the color picker event or else you'll get an error when you try dot color picker event right there when you try to program in the color picker event you'll get an error if you do not import that so you need to import that now we're gonna create some variables that are going to be for the the way the box is going to look on stage kind of its color its shape size so let's pop those in and I'll explain them okay so the rectangle width will be a uh, integer 450 so it'll be 450 wide rectangle height is an integer of 300 so it'll be a little bit wider than it is high and the background color will be a standard orange you can use any hex value you want there and the border color will be black you can also use any hex value there and these are all integer numbers so the border size is going to be set to 2 and the corner radius 12 that will give it a nice curve on the edges so the next thing we're going to do we're not going to render that to stage just yet now we're going to set some things for the color picker so let's say color claim a variable with the color picker name this is going to be color picker type equals new color picker
Okay. So now we can claim some uh, properties for the color picker. So we just grab its name. C right there. Control V. Color picker dot editable. And this will determine whether or not the user can actually put in their own hex number. They don't just have to use what's in the grid. When they're picking colors, they can put in a value. If you say false, then they cannot put a value in. Okay, so we say color picker. Now we're going to add an event listener to this thing. So when it is clicked, we know to open it up and show the grid, the color grid, or the color palette. So let's add event listener, grab that, and it's going to be a mouse event dot click or caps comma and the function that's going to run. Let's just call this click handler. That's its popular name. And also color picker dot move. This will place the color picker where we want it on stage. So in between these parentheses, we can just set the position. I'm going to try 30 by 20 to target my little box. So now, yeah, let me actually remove this event listener and see what happens. I don't see my color picker. Oh, I didn't add child. Derp. Add child <laughs> color picker. There's a good reason we don't see it. Okay, I almost got it. So I'll bring it up a little and over. So maybe 15 and 15. Oh, that's close. Okay, I'm going to change these numbers to get it right on into that uh, little rectangle I made as a placeholder. Then I'll remove that placeholder. Okay, so I've got my color picker where I want it to be positioned, so I removed my little placeholder. You can see if we click it, it opens up and it changes its color. So we're not even going to use the click handler. Let's just get rid of that. We don't need it. Let's carry on. Okay, so now we're going to draw the rounded rectangle. So what that's going to be is a function that's going to produce the rectangle in the uh, the way we want it to look. So let's say draw rounded rect. This is going to fire the function off. Now let's place the function right here function draw rounded rect and the reason why I'm putting it into a function like that and executing it in that way is because I want to use it to redraw I'm going to use this function over and over and I'll show you how okay so that's the function nest set up nice now in here we're going to claim a bar we're going to call it rounded rect good suitable name and this is going to be a shape equal new shape and now we're going to put some of the uh, what's the word I'm looking for the graphics properties graphics dot begin fill We'll use the begin fill. And we'll place the background color in there. Remember the background color right here we defined? Okay, so graphics.begin fill. Background color, that's perfect. Now we'll say rounded rect.graphics.line style. Because we have to have, well, we don't have to, but we want a border around it and in between these parentheses we're going to claim the border size and then the border color 
and those values we defined up top with the others. So this is size. Let's just pop it in and grab it like that. Border size, comma, and border color. Let's just border color. There we go. And now we're going to draw the rect by claiming graphics dot draw rect. Actually, this is going to be a rounded rectangle, so draw a rounded rect. So let's claim draw rounded rect or draw round rect. Open parenthesis, close parenthesis, put a semicolon. Now, in between these parentheses, we're going to claim zero, zero, comma. We're going to put the rect width. Right there. Get another comma. We're going to put the rect height. And we're going to put the corner radius because when you draw a round rect, it's looking for a corner radius value. Okay, so there's your rounded rectangle. Now we're going to end fill. So draw a rounded rectangle dot. Rectangle dot end fill. Okay, so now it's drawn, and all we have to do is really add it to stage. But before that, I'm going to put some positioning properties on it. Dot x is going to equal, let's say, 60, and dot y is going to equal 60 as well. And that's where it will live on stage, according to its top left corner, relative to its top left corner. And now all we have to do is add child. This rounded rect. There. Now we will have a rectangle drawn to the stage. Let's check it out. Control Enter. There we go. But our color picker is not going to change the color of that shape yet. We just have to put in one more little function and listener. Okay, now let me show you the method I created for changing the color of that shape over and over without having more shapes drawn and stacked up on top of themselves. It's going to remove the current and put the new one with the new color right on there. Okay, so let's add event listener for the color picker. And it's going to be the color picker event right here. Let's grab that. Color picker event dot change, all caps, and then the function name that's going to fire off. So let's call it color change handler. Okay, let's close that up. <coughs> Put a few lines there. Now this function that's going to fire off when the color is changed by the user. It's going to have a few things, and I'll explain. It's just four lines. So let's see a color changer. This is going to be event, color picker event, void, and open curly brace, close curly brace, beautiful nested function there. Okay, so let's get these lines up. All right, now, first thing we're going to do, well, let's make sure we have event, color picker event there. Event, colon, color picker event. Where is that? Color picker. Can it make me type it all in before they give it to me? Okay, that's that. Now we can code out the function, and inside the first thing is going to be a var. We're going to call it new uint. So it's a new number. And this is going to be an integer. Open close parenthesis and put the semicolon. Now, here we're going to have open double quotes, put uh, 
two sets of double quotes there, or one set of double quotes. One set of double quotes, and then we're going to put plus sign, and use, we're going to use the event target. So grab event right there, event dot target, which is going to be the color picker. It's dot hex value. Okay, that makes perfect sense. And add to the hex value that 0x. So you can see how when you're styling these things it needs the 0x right before the hex value. So you add it and now that's a string that's getting turned into an, a, a number. So you see what that's doing there? Actually we have to put an equal sign there. U int equals and we have to make sure right here we put u in and that would do it now we just change the bg color each time the user picks one so bg color is now going to change from that orange to this new u int new color now all we gotta do is remove child So if we remove child at, that's going to target a certain index in the display list. And that certain index is num children. So we make sure we get negative 1. It, so it removes the shape. Then you draw a rounded rect again. See? Grab that. Put it right here. Now the draw rounded rect function will fire off with the new BG color values making it a new shape, a uh, new color for the shape. Now let's see if it works. Control enter. It's beautiful. It's exactly what we wanted. We'll have this source file for you for you guys to download if you just want to get your hands on it. Or you can go through the video and code out with me. Alrighty. We'll see you next lesson.